So here's the, here's your design. And if I understand correctly what you want, you want to have a left-hand component and a right-hand component, so to speak. And they share some common geometry, but they also have some different features. So the left hand might have a different feature from the right hand and vice versa. But they do share some common geometry. And that can be done. Actually, in post uh, number three, I described exactly the effects of that if you mirror a component and then add features to them after, or to each individual components after you mirror. I've already described that. But the reason why you can see that is because your workflow is pretty wrong, in essence. Um, so what is, what is a component? A component is a collection of all those objects, and objects I'm referring to what you see in the browser, objects and features in the timeline, that help create that component. What you have done, however, is you've broken up your component into several different components, and each of them only contains a sketch or two, but only one of them actually contains the geometry. So more or less any of that should be one component. It shouldn't be four components, just one. And you could have helped yourself, uh, which you've done to a degree, by naming the sketches appropriately and not breaking that up into several different components. Now you have a pretty screwed up workflow and can't really go back and fix that. And the reason is that, again, the sketches are broken up between different components. So that would make it different, uh, sorry, not different, difficult to follow that workflow that I described. So let me show you how I would design this component. Um, and here it is, but I don't want to give anything away, so I'll scroll my timeline back. And uh, I created also a component called Side1 because that's the component in your design with a solid body ends up. So I created the base profile. I've only filleted what's necessary. So when I extrude it, I have actually geometry attached to this uh, base angle profile here. And uh, I extrude that and then I fill it the remaining sharp corners. And uh, I had my base full profile sketch for a moment. Then I drill those holes in here. Uh, I used the same sketch points. I just drilled the holes in here from the bottom. Doesn't make any difference. They're through holes anyway. Um, and then I decide, well, this is uh, my base geometry. And I want that geometry to be common between the two components. And all the rest I want to be different. So this is my mirrored component here. It's called side mirror one. And then I basically, to be able to better see and explain how this works. I just moved it to the side, but you can delete this position capture feature. You probably don't need it. So, and then I went ahead and basically continued to edit my com uh, my um, component side one and just added what was necessary to add all these holes. Um, I also decided that it's better not to pattern the holes or the points for the holes in the sketch are simply added um, patterns as features, but that's just a little side detail. So then I continue to add all these holes and now I'm done, right? I've got one component that has the same base geometry as my mirrored component, but all the holes that I drilled in it are independent from it. So what that allows me to do now, I could go ahead and edit component number two and for example, uh, example add a quarter inch fillet here and that's independent from component number one, right? But they still sell, share the same base geometry. The advantage of this workflow is if you then decide, hmm, well, I still want them both to have the same base geometry, but this side needs to be seven inches long. Then you edit that and that sketch and both components now that leg is seven inches long and your, <laughs> your cue into the past is the mirror feature, right? So if you then decide, you know, there's another feature, but I want that in both components, then you roll the timeline back to before the mirror feature, and then let's say you want to apply a little fillet here, and there is a chance that I'm going to screw up my timeline. Uh, 
and then you roll the timeline back to before and no that's okay and would have been different if I would have applied that fillet here so now you see the bow that fillet that I applied here also shows up in my in my mirrored components and the reason for that is that it, I applied it before the mirror feature so now you could go ahead and add different boss holes or whatever to this component but they still have the same shared base geometry now here's a here's a word of caution and that's the reason why in many manufacturing and production environments which is where I work um, I design or help design machinery co mirroring components is frowned upon because it's very easy to make mistakes so let me edit this feature this is a right hand thread right what happens if you mirror the geometry will this be a left hand thread well, I created a drawing of this particular component here, the mirrored component, and if you take a look at the hole call out, that hole now isn't the right hand thread, it's a left hand thread. And in most cases, that's not what you want, so be very careful when, uh, when mirroring components, keep that in mind. So hopefully this helps.